Today we are celebrating over 25 years of uh, Life Positive magazine, though we have completed 26, but because of COVID we could not celebrate our 25th birthday. So I could not think of a more opportune place than Chennai to do this here today. And there cannot be a better way to kick off the festival than with a discourse by the Divine Presence Himself, Swami Sudhanand Giriji. We are so fortunate to have Him amongst us and have been given this wonderful blessing to listen to His words. Though Swamiji needs no introduction, I have been given the privilege to say a few words to introduce Him. Swamiji graduated as an electrical engineer from IIT Chennai in 1975. Immediately after that, he joined Bhava Atomic Research Center in Mumbai. After serving there for five years as part of their research team experimenting with plasma physics, he felt the inner calling to dedicate his life as a monastic disciple of Shri Shri Paramahansa Yoganandaji. Ji. I do not even know what plasma physics entails. <laughs> and who here does not know Paramahansa Yoganandaji, Ji, the author of the spiritual classic, the autobiography of a yogi, and the founder of Yogada Satsang Society of India. This is a spiritual and charitable society to disseminate the scientific Raja Yoga teachings, the spiritual treasure of ancient India. For the balanced development of body, mind and soul, the society also works to render humanitarian service to those who are downtrodden and to the needy. Since 1980, Swami Ji has been living in Yogananda Satsang Society ashrams at Ranchi at the, and Dakshineshwar. Presently, he is in Ranchi. He has addressed diverse groups, from students to professors, and in eminent colleges and universities, professionals in engineering, healthcare, and other industries, and those serving our industry either in the military or other government establishments. He has traveled all over India and abroad and given discourses on the how to live teachings of Yogananda Ji, and which bestows all around success and complete fulfillment. And now the Divine Mother has bestowed on us the good fortune of listening to him. Swamiji, please. <laughs> Now I request Swamiji to speak on healing. Greetings to every one of you from the ashrams of Yogada Satsang Society of India, Ranchi, and elsewhere. <laughs> At the outset, I would like to convey our goodwill and best wishes to the organizers of this workshop, Life Positive magazine, and congratulate them for successfully completing 25 years of service to the nation and to the world at large by encouraging positive living, mm -hmm. as the name itself implies, Life Positive, positive living. I was just telling Mr. Ahul Walia, just before coming, you have completing more than 25, maybe 26 or 27. And Yogada Satsang Society of India, do you know how many years we have completed? 106 years. <laughs> it was founded in 1917 and then we have completed 106 years now. And one reason why I am feeling very happy 
to participate with all of you is because two of the aims and ideals of Yogadas Sasang Society of India. One, to demonstrate the superiority of mind over the body and soul over the mind. That is one. Second, to liberate man from threefold suffering, physical disease, mental inharmonies and spiritual ignorance. See, so the theme of the event today, healing by the power of thought, that so much resonates with our aims and ideals of our organization. That's why we are so happy to participate here. As many of you are aware, right in the introduction, Mr. Ahul Walyalji also had mentioned the spiritual classic autobiography yogi. And we'll, we are very happy to present to each one of you a copy from our ashrams with the blessings of our great gurus. So, for today's talk, it will be very appropriate then if I start with your story from the autobiography itself. <laughs> it is in the 12th chapter of autobiography where Swami Sri Yukteswar, Guru of Paramahamsa Yogananda, he is narrating about his interaction with his Guru, Shyamacharan Lahiri Mahasaya interaction with him, you know. I will just read so that you can see how wonderfully Param Sivagananji has captured this. Swami Sri Yukteswarji tells Lari Mahasaya after he had gone through some ailment, very severe ailment. He had lost lot of weight. He had, was quite emaciated. Sir, I have been very sick and have lost many pounds. I see Yukteswar, Lari Masha replied, your mind made yourself unwell and now you think you are thin. This reply was far from the one I had expected. However, Lari Masha added encouragingly, let me see, I am sure you ought to feel better tomorrow. My receptive mind accepted his words as a hint that he was secretly healing me. The next morning, I sought him out and exclaimed exultingly, Sir, I feel much better today. Indeed, today you inaugurate yourself. Larry Marsha replied. Then Yukteswarji protested, No, Master, it is you who have healed me. This is the first time in weeks that I have had any energy. Then Lari Marcia said, Oh yes, your malady had been quite serious. Your body is frail yet. Who can say how it will be tomorrow? This thought of a possible return of my weakness brought me a shudder of cold fear. The following morning, I could hardly drag myself to Lari Marcia's house. Sir, I am ailing again. My guru's glance was quizzical. So, once more, you indispose yourself. My patience was exhausted, Yukteswarji says. Gurudev, I realize now that day by day you have been ridiculing me. I don't understand why you disbelieve my truthful reports. Then Lari Marcia said, Really, it has been your thoughts that I made you feel alternately weak and strong. My Guru looked at me affectionately. You have, you have seen how your health has exactly followed your subconscious expectations. Thought is a force, even as electricity or gravitation. The human mind is a spark of the almighty consciousness of God. I could show you that whatever your powerful mind believes very intensely, it would instantly come to pass. Knowing that Lari Marcia never spoke idly, I addressed him with great awe and gratitude. Master, if I think I am well and that I have regained my former weight, shall those things come to pass? It is so even at this moment. My Guru spoke gravely, his gaze concentrated on my eyes. I instantly felt 
an increase of not only strength but of weight. <laughs> so this is a very dramatic story, isn't it? How instantaneously that Yukteswarji could feel the healing, would get the healing. So that is what today's our theme of the, of today's you know that uh, our talk is the power of positive thought. How that can produce healing, isn't it? And it didn't stop there. In the same chapter, actually before that itself, Params Yogananji was healed by Yukteswarji in the similar way. He was also very thin. In fact, Params Yogananji, sometimes some of us feel that way, na? is it worthwhile to have such a weak body? What is the point in living? Even that much, you know, this type of discouragement or uh, depressive thought used to come. So then, Yukteswarji healed him also. So he he also aroused that faith in him and uh, uh, impressed on him the power of the positive thought. And then in two weeks' time, Guruji Paramsi Yoganandji became very robust and strong in health. <laughs> and it didn't continue, it didn't stop there. <laughs> Further, when Paramsi Yoganandji was in America, 1920, he was invited to address the Congress of Religious Liberals in Boston. And then he stayed there for a dissemination of our ancient yogic science throughout the world for that purpose, as ordained by Mahavatar Babaji. So then, uh, during that time, in Salt Lake City, Params Yoganaji had met Dayamataji, who was the third president of SRFOESS. And when she met, she was a 17-year-old girl. And she was ailing from blood poisoning. Her face was covered with bondage and then her eyes were all swollen. It was like that. And because, he says said it was a blessing in disguise because I stood out like a sore thumb in the whole crowd. <laughs> and there was a big crowd out of it because of her this thing, she attracted the attention of Guruji. Then later on Guruji asked at the end of the talk, what happened to you when you were greeting? He said, because of blood poisoning, doctors are not able to find any cure for this. Then Guruji said that, okay, you come next day, there was a class, you attend the class, at the end of the class you meet me. Then, the last one to meet that day was Dayamataji. Then, Guruji said, do you believe in the power of thought? Do you believe, do you have faith in God's power? He said, yes. Because that day Guruji talked about that arousing that faith, the whole talk was centered on that only. She said yes. Then Guruji just touched at the point between the eyebrow, which is our spiritual center. He touched there, gave a blessing. He said in one week's time, all your ailments will be gone. And it happened so. In just one week's time, all the blood poisoning ailments, ever, ever, all those uh, uh, things gone. She became normal. All bondages were removed. Bandages were removed. And then she became normal. <laughs> so I am giving you the story to show how it is possible that to have that type of powerful healing by the using the power of thought. But then we need to remember one thing. Once one we need to have that connection with the infinite source. Once you connect with the infinite source, then the infinite power is behind our thought. Because thought which is just a vague wish or just a simple imagination, that will not do. There is no energy behind it. Behind the thought, there should be energy. You know, that is very important. That comes by connecting with the infinite source. Through Kriya Yoga meditation, for example, in our Yogada path, we connect with the infinite source. We all do meditation twice a day. So in this way, we can keep on connecting with that source. So when you connect with the source and get that infinite power behind you, that is one. Second, supposing you are going to help somebody, so that person also should have receptivity. If the person is receptive, then only it will work. The person is not receptive, then you know it won't. Both are important, like seed and the quality of the soil. We are sowing a seed in a soil. The soil has to be fertile also. So then only the seed will take so root. It will sprout, otherwise it will not. So this way, the both are important. So I thought that today, we will not just only talk, we will do a little bit practice also to help us. So one is this practice of affirmation. Paramahamsa Yoga Nanji has given us, advocated that 
in fact there is a small book scientific healing affirmations any of you want to explore you are welcome to go through that so in this book params yoganandji tells us the thought should be so strong it should be impressive enough to go beyond the conscious mind into subconscious mind and still stronger thoughts will go to super conscious mind you know that our rishis and munis had explored all these levels of consciousness now only science is slowly slowly you know all all of them they are all proving in their own domains in their own ways so they have classified very clearly the various levels of consciousness so that is why you know params yoganandji is uh, teachings you will find very clearly these things are defined and also if you want to understand little bit more about who we are how we are made mm. you know then i would uh, give you homework <laughs> you all have got that autobiography of yogi you please go through for chapter number 43 resurrection of swami sri yukteswar in that chapter what happens is swami sri yukteswar leaves his body enters mahasamadhi on 9th march 1936 in puri he was buried then guruji was feeling very sad that he lost his guru just few 3 months later on june 19th but then when you are deeply thinking we are more connected with the causal body when you are working energetically we are connected with the astral body and when you are using the five senses and interacting with the world then we are mostly working with the physical body you see how nicely explains the whole thing once you read all of that then you realize life is a journey that mean we go we learn our lessons and then we take some rest again we are ready for the next chapter <laughs> next next class in the school then we learn our lessons or like that you know it goes back and forth there is no such thing like extinction or death death is just a transition from one plane to another plane and now scientific studies yesterday today only yesterday only or sir vengatraman the devotee who brought me he got an article from a, uh, his friend mentioning about this near death experience the, there are you know, many doctors now who have done research and many of you have heard of life after life dr raymond moody for example so they all have done lot of research on so many of them who had near death experience that mean for a while they died the heart stopped and then they came back resuscitation and then they came back so their experience it is amazing to see what they describe and you will see 43rd chapter of yukteswar ji's autobi- uh, in autobiography you will find correlation exactly same thing that been scientifically their things are being proven these are not just only hypotheses or academic you know the concept these are the reality being described by yukteswar ji in that book that's why you know it will be very useful for you to know that that how we are all made and how we can use the power of positive thought to bring healing now healing is at three levels spiritual level then mental level and then the physical level normally we only think about the healing of the body only mostly most of the people think about healing of the body but body can be in a very good health but still mentally suppose you are not really healed you are really uh, mental inharmonies are affecting you all the time or spiritual ignorance we are ignorant about the purpose of life that is spiritual ignorance we don't know why we are here what is the purpose of life if we don't know that that is spiritual ignorance so if these are all more serious than the physical disease you know <laughs> that's why in the life positive the stress is so much there on this uh, uh, thought processes and how we can apply the thought process to heal at all levels different dimensions not just only the physical dimension because i will tell you one story this actual story which i, have, I had experienced myself seen it in patna when there was a program there was this senior one police officer his wife she had undergone so many operations the artificial you know that uh, replacement and uh, all that whatever and every time the operations were successful the doctors declared she is cured like a knee replacement this that so many things but then 
she never recovered she would always be bedridden never coming out she said what is the purpose in life i want to die i don't want to live you know this type of negative thoughts were there in her in spite of doctors being declaring that her thing everything successfully done all operations successfully done but mentally she had given up you know param shivanand ji i mean our gurudev had used all of us as instruments so we went to visit that patient <laughs> and then we just spent some time and just mentioned that god has created each one of us with a divine plan there's a unique uh, capacity has been given to us unique uh, you know speciality has been given to us we have to bring out that uniqueness everyone is special in tamil we have a saying ka kekum tan konju pon konju that we even for a crow the baby crow is very special <laughs> so similar to that to god each one of us we are very special he loves each one of us equally you know very hard to believe that how can god love great saints and also a ordinary man like me how can he love but that is the truth in autobiography you go to the last chapter you will see about that very clearly params yoganaji mentions so i tried to tell her a little bit of that so uh, i didn't see much recognition in the face she was just still lying down and not really you know connecting after that we practiced healing methods which we use later on t- today we'll do we'll end with that only so you can also learn the method that using that healing method healing te- technique spending sending prana energy to the uh, person we did that all of us did next day morning the husband came to my house in the early morning he said what a miracle first time my wife started laughing and she started talking <laughs> and after that every year whenever she would come to ranchi she would come and meet me and then she was absolutely normal became absolutely normal what a dramatic change how it happened because healing happened at that deeper levels you know cure and healing we should understand the difference cure is like symptomatic treatment or on the surface we see symptoms and treat only the symptoms we are not going to the cause we are not going into the root when you go to the root and then remove what is causing the problem then the problem will be completely solved that's why our sankhya philosophy tells us very beautifully which was summarized by param shivanand ji in 1920 when he gave the talk in boston that has come out in the book called science of religion where he tells so clearly this sankhya philosophy summary which all of us can understand very easily that is universal need of every human being is one no matter where we are what religion we follow where which country we stay whatever we do all of us have one common need do you know what is that removal of three fold suffering that mean we want to be free from physical diseases we want to be free from mental inharmonies we want to be free from spiritual ignorance that is to put it in a negative way positive way to be established in infinite bliss sat chit anand to be established in infinite bliss negatively removal of suffering positively attainment of infinite bliss that is the goal of every human being which all of us can agree <laughs> isn't it because nobody can disagree with that because all of us want to be free from suffering if you ask anybody so do you want to be unhappy can will anybody say that yes i want to be unhappy <laughs> nobody will say that because that is the innate desire of the soul to be always in joy to be always in bliss that is a natural desire of all so that means all these maladies or the all these diseases they are all temporary they have been created by our violating the cosmic laws again i will tell you interesting parallel you know that uh, management i now i go to management because i see couple of mbas here <laughs> and there are there may be more also uh, you know that uh, stephen covey's book seven habits of highly effective people there he talks about first generation of management they are simply having a to do list you just tick off i have done i have done then you are a successful manager <laughs> second generation management is prioritizing that which one should be done first which one should be done second third generation management is value based management that mean you assign value which is more of value to you that you do first that you finish then you are successful management didn't stop there they did further research over decades all this happened but he 
summarizing it four generation management is principle centered management what does it mean the whole cosmos is governed by definite principles if you align with those principles then you are a successful person <laughs> if you don't align you are not that is it is not by what status you have what power you have how much wealth you have those things don't define the real you know that uh, whether you are a successful person or not real success means you are in alignment with the cosmic laws with the laws by which the whole cosmos is governed then your conscience is clear you are always peaceful you are always joyous so that is the way that is, he is the real manager you know by successful manager how wonderful it is this is what in the bhagavad gita in the very last thing where in the last shloka you see that one that is immutable cosmic principles that is these are immutable we cannot whether we agree or not like suppose i say i don't believe in newton's third law <laughs> action reaction equal and opposite i don't believe in that you go and hit the wall <laughs> you will get pain <laughs> so it doesn't require human sanction isn't it it is the law by which the whole cosmos is governed so better to understand those and align with those cosmic laws then only you will be successful so when we are up trying to heal then you have to understand at all these deeper levels not just healing the body and keeping the body fit for a while because only for a while we can keep then it has to be it has to die we have to leave the body no matter how much powerful we may be how much rich we may be whatever it is one day we will have to leave the body and go we are not, yeah, so what is the point in spending all our energy time only on keeping the body in a good condition which is not going to happen also <laughs> because in the life everything goes positive negative you see in the electricity we see the sine wave by you know that positive negative it goes up down up down so our life is always series of ups and downs only it is never smooth it is not a straight line so that means there will be good times and bad times so successful person is one who handles not only good times but he also knows how to handle the bad times <laughs> when reverses happen when you have failures when things don't go the way you want when you have trouble after trouble but you don't give up you don't accept defeat you go on fighting you are go on applying positive thinking so then you are going to be really successful because once you do that you will realize god had allowed that to come to you to test your strength <laughs> to bring out the hidden strength within you because otherwise you will be just you will not be even be aware like the simple example during the ramayan time you know that who will cross the seas and go to lanka all the, uh, the they are all discussing you know in the edge of tamil nadu in fact i studied in a school very close to that place <laughs> the village called vedaranyam so this place you know clo- close to that that is where the shortest distance between sri lanka and india you know so most probably that is where they were trying to jump because we have some uh, the uh, some uh, footsteps of you know rama also in that temp- in that place so they were all debating everybody saying i can jump so much i can some so much you know but nobody was can cross the sea and go to the other side but hanuman was sitting very quietly he was not saying anything so then when finally he said hanuman can do that he was humility he was a picture of humility na so he was not saying anything but then he is the one who crossed and went to the other side so like that we all don't know how divine we are there is a hidden divinity within each one of us we think we are ordinary human beings we are op- because we are focusing only on the body and the personality but when we detach from the body and personality then we realize oh i am a soul i am a spark of god i am a spark of divinity divinity is within me you know that experience will be starting to have so that is the real healing real healing ultimate healing is establishing our oneness with god feeling and i know that aham brahmasmi to experience that that is the real you know purpose of life so if you remember that then at a lower levels is easier to handle at a mental level emotional level physical level all of that we will be able to handle in a much better way that is why it's very important spiritual side should be stressed more and more you know that recently previously in the medical science mostly they were focused on physically how to treat cellular level molecular level like that but later on 
mind body connection you know but there are more studies happened started happening recently you can lot of material now you will find if you search in google you will see mind body connections how many you know how much research has been done now so now next another dimension soul body soul mind body connection <laughs> which very uh, hardly you know not much is being done now still quite a lot is uh, to be done if you do that then you will see we are actually covering all the dimensions of a human being then we are not neglecting any dimension then we will have rapid development that is what is happening right now yeah one interviewer asked me in gauhati uh, that uh, do you feel hopeful of the coming generation or you do you feel optimistic something like that i said yes i feel very positive that we are all progressing we are going forward he was surprised he thought how how come we are seeing everywhere all sorts of negative uh, you know news and this that you are saying that we are going positive <laughs> then i said that that is because see in a, our swami sri yukteswar he describes in the book holy signs that we all go through cycles just like everything in nature go through goes through cycles we have kali yuga dwapara yuga treta yuga satya yuga then again we come down descending cycle and again we go through ascending cycle and Yukt- holy signs i mean yukteswar ji scientifically studied this mathematically and he gives us he tells us we have left behind the descending kali yuga and the ascending kali yuga and we are in ascending dwapara yuga that mean we are going forward now so that mean that is why you see within last 200 300 years so much of development has happened so much like for example when i was in iit madras that time that is the time computer center was inaugurated and you know that it was such a huge space it was occupying and we all have to go and punch our cards feed the uh, and they give that leave it there next day we have to go and take out the print out and check uh, do the debugging and again we have to correct our program and give like that in fortran we used to write our you know programs and this that now you see what development from that time <laughs> now even a small watch has got you know that a computer and it can do so many things there it can tell you oxygen rate it can tell you your pulse rate it can tell you how many steps you have taken so many things you know that all these developments have happened in such a short time within my own lifetime 1975 and 2023 you see the difference how much difference so that shows clearly that we are in ascending dwapara yuga but the problem is as we are discovering so many ways of harnessing the energy on the outside if you don't match that with the inner exploration then there is a mismatch dichotomy between outer development and inner development both have to match there is a problem that's why so much of tension so many problems it is because on the outside we are trying to explore like we have gone to chandrayaan we have gone to the moon also now <laughs> india has achieved that great feat so but then inside what are we doing are we aware of what is happening inside do we know what is happening you know that this is what we need to do that if you that is what our rishis and munis did not neglect that they always they focused on that that's why i was telling ahul wale ji just before coming that is spiritual scientists they approach all the life's problems from inside to out material scientists they approach from outside to in so that is why they look so different they seem as if they are poles apart but actually it's because of the direction of their movement that is different that is why but they have to meet <laughs> both have to meet so spirituality and science they are not different both of them are approaching truth in different ways that's why they appear to be different this is what param sevani ji's contribution is to blend that bring spirituality and science together and i will give you homework again <laughs> chapter number 30 of autobiography if you read law of miracles where i so beautifully param shivani ji bring out brings out using using einstein's that uh, you know the relativity theory and with that how the whole world has been created only out of thoughts now i'll give you a quotation by albert einstein the great scientist he said i don't want to know this phenomena or that phenomena i want to know how god thought of creation how beautiful a great scientist is saying how god thought of creation that mean god has built the whole world 
creation only out of thoughts how to believe <laughs> there is no material basis it's all only based on thoughts only and you know that last year nobel prize was awarded to three scientists you know for what it is actually for creating experimental model to prove the quantum physics theories for that purpose and some great eminent scientists are now concluding from that saying that the world we see is not real <laughs> that's what our vedanta tells us that's what our research by our ancient rishis tell us that the world is not real the way we see that mean it is made up of only thoughts thoughts become vibrations vibrations combine in various ways and then you get solid liquid vapor and other things so then finally we focus so much on the outer we forget that what is causing the outer from inside that whole thing is coming out actually but then if you don't focus on the inside we will never understand we will be stuck up only on the outer only that is the cause of all the problems so if you want to lead a life which is positive then what we need to do we need to match inner and the outer there should be a perfect blend harmony between inner and the outer so inner life is that we go inside and just to, you know just to explore and then change our thoughts you know the recent research in neuroplasticity it tells us that our brain doesn't come hardwired though it is it seems that way by our thoughts we can change the brain circuits nerve circuits <laughs> there's a great discovery isn't it but then params yoga anand ji has told long before so let us now practice one affirmation just to get, understand how that affirmation can help us to this is about about uh, our physical body only connected to physical body but using powerful visualization so the visual so i will tell you first the words then how do you practice i will say repeat say one line you will repeat that line the in that in that we will go back and forth first i will first we will affirm loudly loud voice then soft voice more soft voice more soft voice then whisper and then finally mentally in that way and as we go softer and softer our concentration should be deeper and deeper it should not be when you are loudly saying you are concentrating after that you become absent minded then it won't work <laughs> it will work only if your concentration is not disturbed it goes deeper and deeper so let us group wise if we practice you will see the effect much more clearly that's why let us all try that the words are in my spine the outer sparkle in my nerves the outer flow the what my brain it is shining it is whole i will repeat again in my spine the outer sparkle it is god's energy prana which is flowing in the spine that is actually distributing to all the nerves muscles and everything so the main thing is the spinal passage through which the prana is flowing so in my spine the outer sparkle it is the light of god which is actually flowing in the spine in my nerves the outer flow in my nerves so that prana is what is flowing in the nerves and the what my brain it is shining it is whole you know we see the thousand petal lotus we have sahasrara that is shining with the light divine light so that is what we are trying to imagine that that light brain is actually full of light okay let us all do that so when we do that just couple of things or uh, three things first we keep the bar, spine straight we sit with a straight straight spine so that energy can flow freely in the spine that is the reason why we are sitting straight spine then keep the body relaxed no tension anywhere then one more important thing the eyes should be gently focused at the point between the eyebrows by uplifting them two eyes converge they become into one this point that converge but without strain and keep your eyes closed if you want or half closed so keep eyes here then your muscles all the muscles are relaxed then spine is straight so in that way now let us start the affirmation you please repeat after me remember loud voice then softer 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 whisper and then mental okay let us begin in my spine the outer sparkle in my spine the outer sparkle in my nerves the outer flow in my nerves the outer flow the what my brain it is shining it is whole it is shining it is whole in my spine the outer sparkle 
in my nerves thou dost flow the what my brain it is shining it is whole in my spine thou dost sparkle in my nerves thou dost flow the what my brain it is shining it is whole in my spine thou dost sparkle in my nerves thou dost flow the what my brain it is shining it is whole in my spine thou dost sparkle in my nerves thou dost flow the what my brain it is shining it is as we are in the meditative state let us also do a little up meditation keep your eyes fixed at the point between the eyebrows only called the kutastha center be centered there attention is centered in the kutastha so now take a few deep breaths deep inhalation and deep exhalation as you inhale feel that you are drawing peace love joy vibrations as you are throwing the breath out feel that you are getting rid of all tensions worries and everything inhale the positive exhale the negative once more inhale the positive exhale the negative now just imagine at the point between the eyebrows a point of light is emerging a tiny point of light now mentally we are going to expand that by visualizing from the point between the eyebrows it is expanding our whole head is now filled with that light just imagine that way it is becoming bigger and bigger sphere it is now covering the whole body and now covering all of us in this room the whole room is swimming in that divine light which is full of joy now expand further whole of chennai city is immersed in that light further expand whole of tamil nadu further whole of india just see the indian map in front of your mind in your mental within your mental eyes with your mental eyes and then feel that whole of india is covered in that divine light full of joy expand further not only india the our whole world itself is immersed in that the earth is swimming in that joy swimming in that divine light further expand all our solar system all the planets around the sun revolving around the sun the whole solar system is now immersed in that light divine light our solar system is a star similarly there are innumerable stars on the uh, sky you can see so feel that 
the stellar systems, all the stars, they are also filled with that light. Mentally, if you travel to the left, no matter how much distance you travel, you see only light. Right side when you travel, only light. Front, back, above, beneath, within, without. In all directions, the light has spread now. We are all just floating, swimming in that light. Now, briefly open your eyes, look at the body. Again, close your eyes. Think now, oh, I am not this solid body. The light has condensed, has become this little body. But in truth, I am one with the infinite light. Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmasmi. I am one with the infinite light. I and my father are one. Whatever way you want to say, just feel your connection with the infinite light. We are connected to the infinite light. Though God has bestowed individuality, because of that we feel we are separate. In actuality we are not separate. We are one with the infinite. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So we had two brief sessions of affirmation and visualization. Now I will give you a quote by Paramus Yogananji. Mind power carries with it the unfailing energy of God. That is the power you want in your body. And there is a way to bring, bring in that power. The way is communion with God by meditation. When your communion with Him is perfect, the healing is permanent. When the causative power of God comes, the healing effect is instantaneous. No time is required for cause to ripen into effect. So that's a very powerful quotation. That means more and more we should perfect our meditation. Go deeper and deeper. How do we know whether we are going deeper or not? There is ever increasing satisfaction, joy, peace. Day after day, if our joy is increasing, that means we are making deeper and deeper contact. So when we make that type of contact, then we can, any need we have, we can also pray. Address to that infinite power and then pray. But then always we should remember, there is a divine plan for our lives. When we align with the divine plan, so then we are going in the right direction. Sometimes we may pray for something. We may not get it. So we may think that, oh God, is, uh, the infinite power is not listening to me. I am not getting a response. Actually, what is what may be happening, you may be wanting something very simple. Just let us say, I want just praying for 10 rupees. God wants to give you 1 lakh rupees. <laughs> you are only wanting 10 rupees. He is giving you 1 lakh rupees. He is denying you 10 rupees. By denying 10 rupees, he is giving you, preparing you for receiving 1 lakh rupees. <laughs> I am giving a very crude example. But then, you know, that is the way you should treat life. When failures come, setbacks come, then that is the time you should think, okay, why this has come? What should I do? How should I proceed? Focus on what we should do now. You know, in management, again I come back. <laughs> I love to compare with management. <laughs> so that again, the Stephen Covey's book, he talks about a manager who operates from a center of influence and a manager who operates from a center of concern. We are concerned about so many things. We are anxious. We are, you know, very much, we hear news, this, that. We are concerned about the world affairs, what is happening in the country, what is happening here, there, everywhere. So we are all concerned. A manager who operates from a center of concern, he is always negative. He is not able to think in a positive way. But a manager who operates from a center of influence, he is aware of what is happening, but he says, I will focus on what I can do to make a difference. That means his focus is on center of that one. So this, you see, management is telling that this is what exactly we need to do. That means, even though the world is made of relativity, because the world is made of relativity, it has got positive and negative. Alternately, you know, the both are happening. Then, once you are aware of this positive and negative, even when you are in the midst of negative conditions, we should practice positive thinking. We should practice positivity. 
we should see silver lining in the clouds behind the clouds so is is it possible yes it is possible and it is very practical to do because if you do that and our shining example what india has achieved chandrayaan 2 failed chandrayaan 3 success how this this is a principle that means when we fail we analyze and see why we failed what are the reasons and then you make corrective steps and with a powerful positive attitude you just go ahead then you are going to get success you know so this is what we need to approach in life everything which happens in our life whatever it is whatever level it happens always we should approach in a positive way and though we are aware of the negative things happening but we focus on what i can do in the under the current circumstances what should be my focus in that way we out if we proceed then we will be successful okay as i promised in the beginning that healing technique which params yogananda has given which is universal which can be practiced by all and if you want to know more about it you go into website of oss of india oss of india dot org there you will find and i will also now sh- show you through powerpoint then you will be able to connect with that little more deeply so normally we think that the things which happen we have no control over them but everybody's thought makes a contribution so if many people think in a positive way that is going to make a lot of change and through powerful prayers we can make a huge difference that is why param shivanand ji started this worldwide prayer circle where all the monastics sanyasi sanyasinis and our devotees all over the world and well wishers and friends all join in this so the principle is connect with the source of our being that means infinite power or god whatever you want to call connect with that directly so that that power is behind you and then you become a channel and through this channel that infinite healing power will flow to others that is the principle that mean we connect with the power you become a receptive channel and allow that power to flow through you to the persons who are suffering so that they get healing that is the principle so when thousands of people like that all are doing this what a difference it will make i will give you one small example we have every year world convocation in america india we have sangam we have called sharat sangam and various sangams in america it's called convocation so in one convocation at the end dayamata ji told because of so many people coming together and every day praying morning and evening sending the powerful vibrations one great world disaster has been averted because they are saints they are able to see intuitively what is happening and we all may not know all that <laughs> but then we are making a difference whenever we do prayer sincerely we are making a difference so don't think that just one person small person just doing something what difference it will make <laughs> it will surely make a difference in tamil we have a saying siru thuli peruvallam that means you have little drops of water they make the mighty ocean <laughs> so all of us you know we, we may be tiny they are a little drop but if we all combine together it can become a powerful force so the combination combining together need not be only for wars and uh, troubles we can also come together for healing <laughs> for that purpose we can come together also so you see all of us are practicing you can see the photos that we are all practicing in ranchi smriti mandir and elsewhere and it's very easy to do all can do all can participate and it doesn't take long only about 5 minutes or so 5 minutes of prayer 5 minutes of uh, technique more, totally 10 minutes maybe uh, and then it's available in our website oss website as well as srf website you can see that and anyone wanting prayer we also we, we are happy to help anybody wanting prayer for any purpose you can write a letter or write a note or you can request prayer through our website also so we have got that facility you can ask for any help for example during covid times we found lot of uh, so many uh, uh, devotees appreciated this 
because of this prayer they were all they were able to handle the situation and they were able to face the challenges in their lives so that was a great testimony of this uh, effectiveness of this prayer thank you all <laughs>